Hey everyone, it's Ann Manera and we are back again today for another Color Along coloring from Color Along Volume 18 Variety Coloring Book. For today's Color Along, we are working on this page, which is um, the technique we're using today is bolding with markers and crayons. And what I'm using this to, for this Color Along is Crayola crayons and Crayola Super Tip markers. So you can find all of the supplies that I use uh, for every color along over in my Amazon Influencer Shop. And anytime you purchase something from one of those links, I do earn a small commission. But there's a list of all of the products that I use, not only for the color alongs, but just kind of on a regular basis, all of kind of my, my absolute faves and things that I would recommend and things that even that I want, kind of like my wish list of things. So you can do that. Um, the other thing that you can do that we can I want to talk about is that this page is not only found in this coloring book, the Color Long Variety book, but it was also found in my book, Little Boxes Coloring Book. It's a simple coloring book filled with pages, 24 pages, with all different illustrations in these little boxes. So it's a fun book to color. It was a super fun book to draw. And there's links to uh, this, to the Little Boxes book and the Color Along book over in the description of this video. So today we are going to get started with Crayola crayons and we're going to also get started with some uh, Crayola Super Tip markers. Now, what I wanna talk about with bolding is what, what is it, right? What's bolding? Bolding is all about taking the line that is around, the black line that is around, that creates the illustration or the drawing and going over it with a marker to create a bold line. In my Coloring Handbook Volume 1, the Coloring Handbook Volume 1, I have a uh, tutorial all about bolding. So it's a basic technique, and I guess a lot of people have um, have used this since they were kids, right? And if you take a look at this step out tutorial here, it goes over step by step how to create this technique on this flower in this flower. And basically what I'm doing here in this illustrate, in this uh, demonstration is going over each of the lines of the flower with a dark purple marker. And then I start to color in the inside of the, of the flower with a purple crayon. Same thing for this one right here, but for this flower I have used colored pencil. So this uh, coloring handbook comes with a bolding worksheet that you could fill, you could use to practice this technique with different size markers or crayon or um, different types of mediums. And it basically is all about creating an emphasis on that outline. Of so as you outline the outline, basically is what you're doing, you're outlining the actual outline, then it will emphasize the outline of the illustration. The other part is that it's nice to use this technique when you're uh, working with either primary colors or complementary colors or different types of color schemes. So for example, you could easily use uh, a purple outline and then fill in the flower with yellow and that would be a complementary color. You could, um, because yellow and purple complement each other on the color wheel um, and then that would be a good way to work with complementary colors. So, so we're gonna work up, work with this technique today and you can find more um, about bolding in the Coloring Hammer Volume 1. And again, the link to this book is over in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, use uh, Crayola Super Tips to bold the lines. I'm gonna start out with this little uh, flower pot and here I am just kind of bolding those lines around. Now you could use marker for the inside of the area I don't have to use the same um, the same color for the whole thing. So for example, this is going to be my grass. So I'm going to use some green. And then for my sky, I'm going to use a little bit of blue. And what I'm going to do now is take my line around the other colors. So it's going to give an accent to all of that. And I'm going to go around here also. Okay, now I'm gonna take my crayons, which I could just simply use, as you can tell, my crayons are loved. Um, <laughs> well, you could simply use um, another marker, 
right? You could use a different color marker. But for this, for this particular one, I'm using a crayon. So here's my green crayon. Then we've got the flower pot with my broken, my broken brown. Crayons break. I don't know about you, but crayons break. Filling that part in. And then I'm going to take some blue, which this is my blue here. And I'm just going to fill in this area here with the sky. So basically, we have emphasized the outline of the illustration with a color. You could also do it with um, a completely different color if you want to. Let me just put a little bit of this, this green down here. I like to use the, um, the bolding part before I... Uh, add the, the fill in before I fill it in fill in the interior space I like to uh, add it like that for this one I'm going to do something a little bit different I'm actually going to use marker in the fill to fill the inside of the stem in completely and then I'm going to use this marker which I need to get rid of that marker because it's always kind of tricking me I'm going to use some green here so now for the flower let's do some pink around the edges and I'm going to color that yellow part of the center with the marker just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a difference. And then we've got the sky. So let's go back with the blue. And again, I'm going around what I've already bolded. I hope that makes sense. And just kind of adding the color around it. Now, I did... Now, I don't think I mentioned that. I do have a piece of paper behind here so that it prevents bleed through because that's important because these markers will bleed through. And I like to do that with whether I'm using something that will bleed through or even if I'm just using pencil or colored pencils or gel, oh, gel pens especially because what ends up happening is the uh, pressure from the pen actually starts to uh, create an impression on the pre on the following page, the page behind it. So that part can be a little frustrating. So there is my uh, my pink inside my flower. What did I forget here? Oh no, I forgot to do this part. You saw that, didn't you? So let me know in the comments. Have you ever used this technique be technique before? Is this something that you um, that is new to you? What do you think about it? Have, I bet you've done it as a kid. I'm going over this for the sky. And then I'm going to go over this part for the grass. And let's color this grassy area. I'm just going to kind of flip-flop, you know? Flip-flop between sky and grass and, you know, the whole bit. And I guess sky doesn't have to always be blue, right? Because it could be night, so you could, we could make a black sky on these. Um, this book was really a lot of fun to draw. Here's the chimney. I'm going to make it kind of that brick red color and go back in with a little bit of red. And then we've got the roof. Um, I think we'll go with this brownish color for the roof. And I'll go back in with brown. So we're just going to keep kind of rotating what we're doing and kind of going back and forth between the different colors. Um, of course, our windows, is anybody home? We're going to make them so that they are. We'll put some yellow in there. The lights are on. And let's do a red house. What color is your house? My house is brown. Well, brown, beige. It's not like dark brown, light brown. Now for this one, look how close everything is, but you know what? It doesn't make a difference because we're going to go back in and I've got this kind of magenta color right now. And for the door, let's make the door um, just a color. I'm gonna make it um, an orange door without adding any bolding onto that, okay? All right, so now let's see what the next one is. The next one is going to be the opposite. So let's take um, a purple crayon and go over the outside of this flower. And then I'm gonna take a purple marker, a lighter color marker, and 
go over the inside of it. Now, so far, I've only done kind of like different shades, right? Different values or shades of different um, colors rather than going with the opposite effect. So we'll have to switch it up a little bit when we get to our next illustration. So now I'm gonna take this lighter green color and color inside the leaves. And then for the bottom of this, I feel like it should be dirt. So I'm going to use some brown, a brown crayon here. And then I'm going to use a blue crayon for the sky. Now, you can still use a, you don't have to switch the mediums. You can still use bold it in crayon. So I'll do an example of that here. Bold it in crayon and then color it in lightly. Uh, on the inside of it, on the interior of that space. So kind of a fun technique. I'm going to take this color, which I kind of consider like a brownish color. I don't know if it's supposed to be. I'm not really sure, but it looks brown to me. I'm going to do this on this side here. Color this part here with brown. There's the dirt. Then I'm going to use just brown on the, the post of that birdhouse. And for the sky, um, I'm going to use this different color blue, which is like a, uh, it's a little bit lighter, isn't it? And just kind of add that to the sky. And then what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to add some pointillism, some dots just to kind of create the inside of it. And what ends up happening is you can kind of see that the, the blue is a little bit lighter. We can also mix a different blue in there if we wanted to. Um, we can go over it again with the crayon if we wanted to, but for that one, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Here's magenta, and I'm just gonna give it bolding on the roof there, and then go back in with this light pink color. So that really kind of makes a difference. And then for the front of the house, I'm gonna go with yellow. Got to make sure those birds can see the house, right? And I'm just going to leave that one the way it is. Now for this one, which is a little bit more of an abstract, let's do this color on these. And we'll kind of make it a little bit of a, of a monochromatic type style for this one. So you can really use a lot of different techniques in this particular um, style page. Like this book, along with... Um, I have a couple of different books like this. I have Tiny Houses and I have Little Boxes. And then I have my newest book, Lots of Dogs and Cats. And it's little boxed illustrations. Um, it's great for coloring on the go. It's great for coloring maybe just a little area that maybe you don't want to color. All right, now let's give this yellow here, which is kind of like an opposite of this magenta color. Because you want to kind of think that it's in the purple family. And I'll color this portion with this orangey yellow color. So I guess it's kind of an orangey yellow. And I'll go into this area here. And then could just do a solid line for that middle section right there, those kind of like divider lines. Um, I'm gonna go with just this darker red. So not every line throughout the entire illustration or, uh, well, on this page we're dealing with multiple illustrations, but not every line needs to be bolded. So it could just kind of be like a, you know, a little indication of bolding. Kind of a little indication or an accent to it all. So for this one, I've come down on each part of the angel's dress. And I'm gonna color the inside of this with some pink. Then I'm going to give her some yellow wings. And color yellow in the inside of this. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Choking. And then I'm just gonna do pink on the inside of this also for her face. 
Let's do green. She's standing on grass. She's trying to ground herself. <laughs> you know, you ever seen those people that uh, the recommendation is to walk barefoot. Remember when you used to walk barefoot on the grass? What happened to the days of that? Doesn't seem like people do that very much anymore. All right, now I'm going to add some turquoise, this turquoise color to my background. And I'm gonna make this one a little bit different where I'm not going to do the edge, this outer border part, just to kind of make it look like it uh, kind of goes a little bit to the edge and maybe lightens up. What do you think? That one's kind of cool. All right, let's move on to this reddish orange color and we'll go on to this house. We'll give this a nice solid color. I'm going to go right over those doors and windows. And then what I'm going to do is add a little bit of yellow onto that. And let's go back on top of this just with the pink door. Why not, right? All right, let's do some, what do you like um, using, what do you like to use the bold, use for bolding? Do you like to use a marker? Um, or do you like to use a crayon? Make me, let me know in the comments. And let me know what you think about these uh, color alongs that have been happening. You know, I've switched to um, recorded color alongs versus live. And, you know, one of my biggest reasons for doing that was that I really wanted to be able to share my knowledge uh, of art in general, coloring, different art, different techniques with all of you um, in a more of a tutorial format so that it wasn't so... Um, I wasn't missing anything. So I hope that I've achieved my goal of uh, sharing that information with you. And I hope that you think that the uh, videos are more tutorial based and you're learning more and more. Um, you know, I have a background in art. I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in art. So I want to be able to share as much knowledge as I have uh, with all of you. And well, with, and, you know, for in a reasonable amount of time, you know, you can't go to art school on YouTube, that's for sure. Although people think you can, but you really can't. <laughs> so um, I guess that it, the best part to improve your skills in art is to just do it. You know, this could be a table. So let's make it a, I guess we can make it a brown. We're going to go with this marker. I think the best way to improve your coloring skills or whatever type of creative endeavor you are on is to just just do it, you know, just jump in there. The more you do it, the better you are. The, you know, the more you sing, the better you are. The more you play an instrument, the better you are. So I just think that it really makes a difference. Um, practice makes perfect. We've got to tell Scarlett to go away now. I don't know if she'll do it or not. Okay, she did it. She did it. Hip, hip, hooray. Okay, so now let's add this blue here. I'm sorry, blue. This is pink. This is pink. I don't know why I thought it was blue for a second. And then I'm going to add carnation pink to here. I think this is called, yes. Is it? Carnation pink. Can you name the Crayola the crayon colors without looking at the label? I bet. Wouldn't that be an interesting little challenge to be able to name them all? You know, that would be kind of cool. All right, now we've got this uh, beverage. I'm gonna color this part in instead rather than do it the other way. And then I take this darker green and I'm gonna bold it. So I did this the opposite. Now look what happens when you do that opposite it ends up resisting. So that's the other part too to consider is that how much will it actually start to resist? Let's do the wall behind it with yellow. This is making me want to have a milkshake. I don't know about you. And now we talked about doing an opposite color, right? So complementary colors. So the complement of yellow would be purple. So now I'm gonna color the inside part of this with some purple. And I'm going to really try very hard not to uh, get on that uh, yellow area that I created. And the bottom portion, let's make it pink. We've got to go with some color in our life, you know? And I'm gonna do the top part here and give it a pink straw. Okay, 
And then the, we're going to just kind of give it a little bit of pink there. Now this one's a fun one because it just has these little circles. So we can make them all different colors and then color them in all different ways. So there's a green outline with some yellow. Here's a magenta outline and I'll do um, some yellow inside of this or that orangey color with a marker. And then let's make this an orange outline and then color it with a purple marker. And then color this one, we'll do this one with blue and then use green inside it. And it looks like we need some pink, don't you think? So let's do pink on this. And where's that carnation? There you are, little bugger, trying to get away from me. And now the background, let's go with some lavender in the background, okay? I'm gonna use this lavender marker for the entire background, and then I'll go back over it with a dark purple for our bolding. So this is a fun, I don't know, it's a fun, unique technique. I mean, sure, certainly if you did this on a bigger piece of paper, on a bigger illustration, like a one page uh, coloring illustration, I'm trying to keep my markers to one side and my crayons to the other, but apparently my brain is not connecting <laughs> with all of that. All right, now, of course, here's the cheeseburger, right? So I'm going to use brown for the bun. Here's another brown. Now, I probably should have more of a, a lighter marker for this, you know. Um, and then I'm going to outline this with this brown color here. And then we've got our lettuce. And I think we have some cheese sticking out right there. And then I believe that this section here is the tomato. Oh, that should have been a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter, right? Okay, let's put a purple wall behind it with this marker here. And then I'm going to use, let's use pink behind it with this. So again, we made, we put a huge emphasis on the line that was there. I'm going to do this part too with this. Put a huge emphasis on the line that we saw behind there, the, the line around it. Again here, huge emphasis on that line with the middle section being yellow. Now, we have this guy right here, which is another kind of abstract one similar to this. And you can find illustrations similar to this in my book, um, Frenzy. This is kind of a Frenzy style, Frenzy style page. Let's do this part here, doing it a little bit differently than the other one. And then adding a little bit of pink. I'm going to add green on here. And then let's go with this hot pink. Do you keep your hand full of all your coloring supplies while you're coloring? I do. I don't know why. It's like I have my own little holder. Who needs a case? I just have my hand. So that part's done. Now, one of my favorite little guys, this little dog. This reminds me of my dog, Willie. He's no longer with me, but he what a good guy he was. Give him a black nose. He was a great dog. See, broke the crayon again. I think it's me. I think I have a grip. No, I really think it's the lights. I think it's my lighting. It kind of like heats up as I'm coloring. All right, let's give this guy a yellow body, just because. And then add some yellow crayon into the middle of him. Well, that's kind of an orangey color, isn't it? And then the top portion of this dude, we're going to put this brown color in with his mustache. I guess you would call it a mustache, right? Give him some uh, black eyes. And then I'm going to use a yellow, put a yellow head. So it gives you a little bit of contrast. 
And I'm thinking that he should be standing on the grass. And we'll use a little bit of that uh, green, just green. It's no other color, but just green. Now I am going to add blue for the sky. And let's add some turquoise to this, you know? Some turquoise to the background. And now we've got this dude right here. This is another dog. You know, dog dudes. That would be a cool color book, wouldn't it? Dog dudes. Get it from some brown, a brown leg. And then I'm gonna go back with this color right here, this marker. But again, remember this, this marker over crayon kind of has a little bit of a resistance to it because it's water-based versus it's water and wax. I'm gonna give this uh, guy a red collar. And I don't know, I mean, should he be sitting on a blue, should the sky be blue? Maybe it should be purple. Let's make it purple. All around him. Here, and we're going on top of that line like we said. And then I'll give it a pink in the middle. Again, emphasizing the uh, actual line itself. And then I guess we can give him some grass here. You know how much dogs love grass? My dogs like to eat grass. And there's that green. Now we have our candle. So let me give the candle just kind of a yellow wick for the flame. And then for this one, I'm gonna go with a purple base of my candle with purple inside it, okay? And then for the top portion, let's do a complementary color of this yellow, even though we did the wick of it, and now let's go back in with the purple for the to complement it again. And I'm going to just kind of give that part a little bit of a little bit of purple. Let's add this color magenta, which is called red violet, but it looks like magenta to me. One of my all-time favorite colors. What's your favorite color? Put it make put it in the comments. Let me know what your favorite color is. And you know, while you're in the comments, uh, go ahead and like this video. Give this video a thumbs up so that you I know you like it, and hit that bell for notifications, the notification bell, so that you know every time I post a new video. And if you could subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome too. And tell your friends. Now for this one, I'm coloring with the light green first. And then I'm gonna go back over the edges and bold it with this, which is the darker green. And I'm going to call this one complete. So this was a fun page, right? So let's just think, let's just kind of do like a recap of what we just did. We worked with the technique called bolding and this page can also be found in my coloring book, Little Boxes, simple coloring book. Um, you can see the link in the description below of this video. Um, the bolding technique really emphasizes on creating that line. You can also find out more about bolding in my coloring handbook, volume one. Is it volume one? Yes, volume one, where I go over, step, give you a description of what bolding is, talk about it, uh, do an illustrated uh, step out of what happens, and you also have a bolding worksheet. And the link to the coloring handbook can also be found in the description of this video. Um, and... The next video, um, I hope that you'll be able to join me. We'll hope to see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.